Hey everybody. Hi. Hi. Everybody over here, everybody in TV land. <clears throat> I went to church this week. Yay. <laughs> I went to the church of Oprah. I hope you don't mind. I took some notes. <laughs> Now I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I got a lot to get through. So if I don't get through before it's tomorrow, I will resume this on Wednesday and continue. And because uh, it's not important to me to get this done. And before anyone accuses me of Oprah bashing for two hours, <laughs> um, I just want to say this. No matter what I think, no matter what I feel, no matter what my opinion is, no matter what you think, no matter what you feel, no matter what your opinion is, God loves Oprah Winfrey as much as he loves any of us. And we use the phrase, take things with a grain of salt. That's a really good grain of salt to take anything with. When you really love somebody, remember God loves them more. When you really hate somebody, remember God loves them just as much as he loved Jesus when he was in the flesh. This thing's in a whole new perspective. That having been said, I will say that there are better quality videos on YouTube on a lot of the subjects I'm going to address tonight. Great production values, great editing. <clears throat> I don't do that. I think that the, the word matters. I think what I'm saying matters. I think what God is saying matters. And I think it's for God, through His Holy Spirit, to really talk to the hearts and minds of the people that will make this particular video, my most watched video in my history. So I, I did go to a great length to make sure that I covered everything that I believe God showed me to cover. But I did do it in a particular order that may be a little bouncy. So I'm really trusting the Holy Spirit to make tonight's message flow and more than anything to make sense and spiritual purpose to anyone who is blessed enough to receive it. So I want to say I am nervous. <laughs> I feel like I'm underdressed. Um, <clears throat> I am nervous and because it matters so much to me. It matters so much. And I wrote myself a note saying that I'm going to relax. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to breathe. And if it gets to be too much, I'm going to say I'm taking a break. Because the only thing I am going to do different tonight is I really am going to honor the videographer when she tells me it's time to stop for a second while she goes on to the next, the next taking, the taping. So she's going to raise her arm when I need to stop talking, and I'm going to take a break. And I'm going to shamelessly drink water, which I never get to do when I sing, because I'm too busy being, Arr. people who are, Arr. don't drink water. <laughs> oh, one down. <laughs> um, is that light okay? Because I was really counting on it to read with. Could it spin just a speck? All right. The thing that God really ripped my heart open with this week had to do with um, that we're supposed to be keepers of the faith. Thank you, it's perfect. We're supposed to be keepers of the faith instead of uh, keepers of the crumbs. That for as long as I've been a Christian, 28 years, anytime anyone mentions Jesus or God, Christians have been like, oh my God, 
They mentioned God. Okay, okay, okay. They said God in that. Oh my, oh my gosh. In, in that movie, they, they said grace. Oh, that's a good movie. Because they said grace. Oh, and, 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 and Bette Midler, God is watching us from a distance. Does that mean? I hate that song. God is not watching me from a distance. God is not watching me from a distance. But anything, we, we just love the crumbs because we live in a world that hates us. Why do we care if those idiots acknowledge our faith or not? Who cares? Who cares if they misrepresent our faith in, in art? I mean, who cares? We know what we know. We know what we know. So if someone who doesn't love Jesus that I know makes a movie like, you know, that everybody got all freaked out about, Last Temptation of Christ, if it doesn't line up with my spiritual beliefs, I'm not compromised. And anyone who brings up the movie, I can say, hey, I, you know what, that's what that movie says. Let me tell you what my experience is. I picked a strange example because I love that movie, but I know a lot of people were offended by it. But who cares? Who cares? <laughs> we freak out if they use too much Jesus in something, like Last Temptation of Christ, and we run and clamor if they drop a few crumbs off their table at us. And the Bible talks about crumbs. And the reference to crumbs in the Bible is what's left over. That after God's people feast, maybe there's something left for the people that may become God's people one day. Not for God's people to hang out like dogs under a table hoping, hoping um, a piece of chicken falls off the table. You know, or a kid doesn't like their broccoli and feeds it to the dog. That's not what we're supposed to be. So we're not supposed to be clamoring over anybody, no matter who they are, musician, television star, president, because they mention Jesus for a second or two. Or even if they're like total Christians, we should be like, ooh. We live in a corrupt world run by corruption. No matter who the best person on the planet is, they're going to be corrupt. That's just the bottom line. That's just plain old Bible stuff. And Jesus said to Peter, whew, got through that. Jesus <laughs> said to Peter, I'm going to trip over it. That would be ladylike. He said, who do people say that I am? Oh, they say you're a prophet. They say you're a great man. They say you're a great teacher. They say you're John the Baptist, raised from the dead. Wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Wasn't he a prophet? Don't start with me. Don't start with me with half-truths that happen to be true, but not the whole truth, because I'll call you the devil. Jesus said, well, who do you say I am? And Jesus said, you're the son of God. You're here to save man from their sins. You're the great sacrifice. And Jesus said, I think I'll build my church on you. Jesus did not talk that much compared to the whole Bible. You read the whole Bible, the section of Jesus talking is very small. I suspect everything he said was really important. Really important. Can I get an amen? amen. And he made a point of saying, who do people say that I am? Uh, but who do you, who knows me, say that I am? That's where I'm going to build. That's where I'm going to plant. That's where I'm going to nurture, water, and develop. Isn't that nice? That he says, for the people who know me, who don't go along with that person who says he's this, that person says he's this, that's where I'm going I'm to plant myself. That's where I'm going to plant my future. That's where I'm going to plant my people. That's where I'm going to leave my legacy. Hallelujah times infinity. I love, I love things like this in the Bible. How they grossly apply to our lives. Like, like blindingly apply. Like, because we live in a world where people run around. And tell us who Jesus is. I posted something about what I'm going to speak on tonight on, on my Facebook. And I, I said... I really don't care. I mean, I'm not going to like go after anybody because they don't have my belief system. I expect that. But when I know Jesus and they use Jesus in their rhetoric, 
then I'm ready to fight. Because I know Ed. And if someone were running around misrepresenting Ed, I say, excuse me, I know the guy. That's not who he is. That's normal. That's what you would do for your friends. That would you, that's what you would do for your family. That's surely what we need to be doing for our God. But I went to church, Oprah, and I took a lot of notes. We're on the first note, by the way. That was all the pre-note stuff. That was all the stuff I thought of afterwards, I made, after I made all my notes. And after I get through all my notes, I've got another page. But I am a gifted orator. I tend to move quicker through this stuff than I'd ever imagined which leaves time for really long stories about my personal life that have funny endings. So, <laughs> that having been said, when I went to church Oprah, the queen of the church told me and the whole world that if she can impart one thing to me as she leaves, her position on television is that we need to all use our platform, whatever it is, whether it be rich and famous like Oprah, or a hairdresser at a salon, or a housewife at home, or a really angry Christian rock star with a camera on. I listen to High Priestess Oprah, and I agree. I should use my platform. I should use my platform. She said, whatever your platform is, that's your talk show. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Paisley Yang Colovich Show. <laughs> you are at my talk show. And be careful, There's, there is stuff under your, under your seats, but that's only because Jerry didn't clean. <laughs> I went through the entire hour, and every time, every time Miss Winfrey spoke of spiritual things, of human spiritual things, I jotted down what she said. Now I want to be clear. I want to be clear. I do have a sarcastic tone, but anyone who knows me knows me that never goes away. I'm from the San Fernando Valley. We all talk like this. It's a, it's, it's a cultural thing. And everybody knows that I'm a little ticked off right now. But please understand, no matter what I say or do, it doesn't change how God feels about Oprah Winfrey and everybody who admires and loves her, Christian or unchristian alike. I just want to address something that has basically maybe nothing to do with Oprah Winfrey, but being that this is something that so many people saw and heard, and everyone's version of what they saw and heard are so different, that I thought it might be I never use this word, prudent. Just to jot down what the teacher said. She said, you're in my classroom. You're in my classroom for the last time. This is the last thing I'm going to teach you. I took notes. I, took, I didn't leave anything out. If anyone thinks I left anything out, raise your hand at any time and say, well, you left something out. Correct me, seriously. I, this isn't the whole hour, God forbid. It's most of it, though. She showed a clip from her first show, the first thing she said to humanity on television, and she said, this was my goal from start to finish, and it is the gift I leave you with today. She said, I'm here to teach you about the power that you have to change your own lives. I'm here to teach you about the power that you have to change your own lives. And tonight, I want to explore what that actually means. Because yes, if I don't like my job, go get another one. If I don't like my marriage, go get another one. I get that. That's not at all 
That is not at all what she meant. Well, it's part of it. Yeah, Jesus is a prophet. That's part of it. But it's not the entirety. Because there is not a single Oprah Winfrey in the world who would be sitting here today that would not argue my next point. And my next point is what she exactly meant was, he said, waiting.